So the way that we all became familiar with you was Lil Nelson, um, one of the twins on the Cosby show. Um, but you've been doing so many things, like so many influential things that are like kind of cemented in our history. Um, tell the people about some of the things that you've been doing over these last three decades. Uh, I went from Cosby Show to Family Matters and Fresh Prince and uh, Living Single. I did those those uh, pretty much back to back. You know, I, I think I was five and a half when I was uh, done with Cosby Show. Mm -hmm. I had a little break um, and I I think instantly hopped on to Fresh Prince and that was right after and then um, I moved from that to I believe it was Living Single and then I did Family Matters so you know it's just having that in in my stable alone you know I could have quit then you know <laughs> honestly <laughs> um, you know just looking back and especially now that those shows uh, are getting you know, I think that really what is cool is that we are, you know, in the mode of looking back and, and watching those shows and saying, wow, this was really good. This was really funny. Um, so it's, it's really cool to be a part of all of that. And after that, I did a lot of guest spots on a lot of other sort of well-known shows at the time. I did ER, uh, High Incident, um, stuff mm -hmm. like that. I had a, uh, a series regular role on the Weird Al show. Uh, with Weird Al Yankovic, uh, that was really like a cult classic kind of thing. So, you know, I, I, I've been everywhere and done every type of job you can think of from that to voiceover. I started voiceover when I was around, oh man, 11 years old. And, um, uh, Rocket Power was my first cartoon. So mm. that with, um, with, uh, with uh, Rocket Power. And from then on, I went on to do Clifford the Big Red Dog. I did uh, Fairly Odd Parents, of course. And so on and so forth. So voiceover has become sort of a, a 1A, 1B type situation when it comes to my career. It's great to have that side of it, though. So it sounds like um, those residual checks uh, should be pretty nice. <laughs> we, then I, they're like coming I said, from a couple I, places I, I, now. I, I, you know, I, I look at a lot of uh, a lot of my friends and everything that, you know, they a lot of them were able to support themselves on mm -hmm. uh, on acting and it's just such a, a a really a really cool thing to to be able to say but even with that i always uh, also held a regular job of some sort like i i will always stayed in the workforce uh, even as a teenager um mm -hmm. so i think that that was important for my development to kind of understand that yeah the residuals are nice but i don't want to rely on them too much cuz yeah. you know who knows when that stops coming one day you know so <laughs> yep so a three-year-old who is an actor like is it something that you woke up and say hey mom dad this is something that I wanted to do or was it something that they saw in you that pushed them to put you in that spot I get that question a lot it was and it, honestly believe it or not it was me I was uh, really advanced for my age um, I could read and write at I believe it was third grade level uh, at about three and a half and oh. so yeah. <laughs> and so it was just one of those things that I was um, reading everything in the house. I was bugging my parents all the time because I could talk full sentences. And so you have this three mm -hmm. who's in the bed with you. You know, it's not like I was going to school at that point or anything. Mm -hmm. and exactly what happened. It got to the point where they just had to put me in school. And so a family friend uh, ended up, um, you know, owning a school out there in, in Chicago where I'm from. And they said, hey, bring him here. You know, we know he's, you know, younger than uh, the norm, but we would, you know, love to cultivate them in our pre-K program and see what we can do. And that's right. exactly what. So I was there. I started first grade at, uh, at, uh, at that age. So, you know, it was just <laughs> really, really crazy to kind of go through that uh, in a sense. But yeah, it, it was, it was uh, really advanced from that point on. <laughs> so has any of your childhood at any point of your childhood, have you experienced anything normal? Yeah, no, I, I mean, I went to school. Uh, my parents uh, made sure that I was in school. So I went to a school called Park Vernon Academy uh, out in Chicago. That was a private school, but it was in the city. Mm -hmm. And you know, that I had that experience being in classroom, having to go to class, all of that. And I stayed mm -hmm. that way all the way up into to college because I just, 
uh, I didn't like not having the experience. I hated hearing kids who didn't have that experience and grew up in the business and was like, man, I, I wish I had a childhood. And I also hated the the, the people who, you know, um, did too much on the other things and, and really kept, you know, sort of sheltered the kids from having, you know, sort of being in the business a little bit. So I was really thankful to have parents who understood that I was supposed to have that mix in order, in order to succeed and to have longevity. Um, and so, yeah, I was I was really glad to and fortunate to be in that situation for sure. So is there anything about your journey, um, childhood wise, any of the roles that you've taken, anything that you would change knowing the things that you may know now? Change? No. Um, you know, I, I lo absolutely love my career. Um, I think once you make peace with who you are as a performer, mm -hmm. as a performer, um, nothing really phases you, you know, in that sense. And uh, I think I've reached that point uh, long ago. I think the people that have come to me and said that I've touched their lives with a, you know, a role or, you know, oh, my goodness, like you were on Fairly Odd Parents. That's something that I watch literally every day. And now I have children, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you can't, you know, you can't really replace, you know, and there's no amount of money or no sort of popularity that can kind of go in that in that place. So, um, yeah, I've I've come to peace with that and I wouldn't change any role or um, any situation. I think it all just comes to, you know, the end goal. And it's like it it's all usable. I, I, I preach that all the time. So in speaking about an end goal, you have decades and decades left on your life, on your career. What are some of the things that you have not already accomplished that you are working toward accomplishing now? Man, um, solidifying uh, my voice, uh, I think, uh, as, as a person, along with the performer, I think that now, especially with, you know, the boom of social media and technology, we have the opportunity to really learn these people. I think that right now what, what we're going through with all of this sort of, um, you know, sort of uncovering and exposing of, you know, the, the really bad depths of how ugly this business can be, you know, um, now it's about knowing these people. You know, we, we are at now because we didn't know these people back then. It was a facade. It was a face and it was a character uh, uh, in a sense. And so I think that there is obviously some mystery to be had. You don't want to completely display your life on, online, but I think that there's definitely something to benefit from being so connected to people now so easily. I think that um, I, I, I definitely want to take advantage of that for sure uh, moving forward and just really kind of um, making, making a stamp, you know, where it's like, oh, you know, um, that's a Gary Gray project or, you know, and we can tell from a mile away that has Gary Gray written all over it, you know, that's something that I definitely would like to achieve. So what will, or what does a Gary Gray stamped project look like? <laughs> um, everything, you know, I am a student of everything and uh, I preach that uh, not only in my coaching, but just business wise. Um, when I accept projects, when I'm creating projects, I, I don't like to have one box, you know, there is no, mm -hmm. Um, thing that sort of seems like um, something that I want as far as a genre. But I think mm -hmm. what's important that w people will understand is that freedom, that sense of freedom, especially in, in, in a black voice, um, will be my calling card, you know, as far as um, not having us pigeonholed to certain roles or having certain genders pigeonholed to certain positions. Um, you know, my company, I'm going to pride myself in that. So um, that's really what I want to achieve. It's really no tonal change or no, mm -hmm. you know, tonal or pitch stamp as far as that, where it's something like a Michael Bay, where you're like, oh, visually, I can tell, you know, uh, I wouldn't say that, but I would say that just in the message, in the feel alone, you know, you'll be able to, you'll be able to tell. So you mentioned voice and voice and telling story. Um, over the last year, our stories have become, I wouldn't say more popular, but they are more understood in a way, I guess. How important do you feel like it is for us to be in control of us telling our stories? Because as you know, there are a lot of people in Hollywood that write stories based off of what they think we should look like or how they think we should sound, but they don't really know our story. So how important is it for us to be in control of sharing our own stories. Absolutely. 
absolutely incredibly important. I mean, with any, with any story and any book, um, you know, perspective is everything, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't matter what you're trying to tell. It could be fact, it could be fiction. Um, you know, it has to be told from the source perspective in order to be authentic. And I think that, you know, what we've had, um, I think actually I just saw today uh, the disparity between um, screenwriters and between race and gender. And I believe it was something like 85% of screenwriters are white males. Wow. Then I believe, then there's, um, uh, I want to say it was something around like 14% you know, white women, and then the rest were uh, minority men and women. And that's just crazy. That's staggering, yeah. you know, and it's, um, it's a problem. Uh, and, and that is why the award shows look the way they do. Um, and we, we think that it starts at the Academy, but it doesn't. It starts with the projects. It starts with the writing mm. and who's writing these things. So perspective is actually absolutely everything. And um, you can't tell um, the... TQ community that they can only have things by straight people or, you know, mm -hmm. you can't uh, a Holocaust survivor that, you know, this is actually going to be written perspective from, you know, a, you know, a cis male from, you know, Europe somewhere. And you just don't know whether that's going to be the actual voice that you need. And I think that um, for me to see what has gone transpired in this past year and seeing um, how the media can twist things and, and twist words uh, and perspective mm -hmm. uh, to make certain demographics look a certain way. It's it's really scary, right? And we see that, man, if that's what they do with fact, then what can you do with fiction? And we realize as we look back and see things that we've known to grow in love, we see the problems within it now because of the awakening that we're having at this moment. So, um, you know, I, I example people, you know, going back to I believe it was Moesha and saying, wow, this this father was pretty problematic, you know, and <laughs> Yeah. look at that and, man we didn't we didn't notice that before and you know and that's why i say perspective is everything and now the timing is perfect to really uncover how you look at perspective and how we view it is it okay for someone who just experienced this life to to write it you know this white guy who you know hung out with these drug dealers and has this story wants to tell a story about it is that okay? You know, it's his experience, you know, and I think that that's a, just a crazy gray area that needs to be discussed. But in its discussion, we also need to break the barrier of allowing people, you know, to completely stomp over whatever is source material for them. You know what? It is so interesting that you mentioned Moesha because when Moesha came out, I think I was, what was it, 95, 96? I was like We're seven, eight years old. And watching it now when it came on uh, uh, Netflix, it was just so amazing to see the things that we saw now. Like you said, seeing that the father was problematic, seeing that Moesha was this and seeing that Moesha was that. And it's just so amazing that the different places that you are in life, you see things in a different light. Back then, we were just so excited to see somebody who looked like us, who was yep. around somewhat our age range, representing us in a way but yeah we see now it definitely wasn't what we saw then yeah. so with that being said when you take on the roles that you take or the projects that you take do you think of the right now moment or do you think about the effect that it could have on the people that are watching i think that's a different answer for for some roles that i've taken mm -hmm. um obviously not going to be taken into account every time. I think depending on the role, you know, there's some things that scream importance. There's some things that don't, you know, and, and, and that's just what it is. In those projects, there's nothing that to speak lesser of those projects, but it's mm -hmm. just what it is. You know, you're not trying to achieve um, some sort of social relevance of any kind or anything. You're purely entertainment and that's perfectly fine. Um, but I think the ones that were necessary, I did take that time and care and really think about, you know, okay, cool. What is this going to say later on? And what is that not only going to say uh, about me as a performer, but in this, this whole space, this whole topic of discussion, you know, something like Alicia, you know, if, if, if that uh, role is to be had now, whatever actor is auditioning for it has to ask those, those questions, you know, mm -hmm. if at that character. Now you are literally 
sitting with yourself and saying, man, do I want to be, do I want to be seen as this kind of guy, you know, and that, you know, used to be something that was normal audition, you know, 10, 20 years ago, you know, and mm -hmm. so I think it's very cool that we have this, this amount of care. There's a lot, a lot of actors that don't feel the same and they like, oh gosh, you know, now acting has in this, this sort of uh, too much role, you know, that's basically the same thing that they say with stand-up comedy, you know, I don't want to have tiptoe over everything and everybody but um you know I, like i said I, I i think that if we don't care about people and stories then we're not true actors i think if we are just simply trying to tell a story or the story that we want to tell then mm -hmm. what are you doing here you know what i mean I, I signed up for this because i was accepting of any story that came to me that i felt i had the ability to, to do um not not to do a certain thing <laughs> I mean, so uh, I don't know. That's just my perspective. But, you know, you can feel the type, type of way you want to feel. But mm -hmm. it's a waste of time, you know, at that point. So I got you. So I don't want to compare you to, like, other actors or have you compare yourself. But out of all of the movies, all of the shows that you've seen over your lifetime, is there a role that you thought about and said that role was powerful and I wish that could have been me. Wow. Hmm. Uh, man, you know, I don't, I typically try not to do that too much. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely some projects that I feel like it wasn't necessarily the role, like looking at a peer and being like, damn, that wish that could have been me. I think it was, oh, I wish I could have just been a part of the project. Yeah. That counts, you know, it's like more so like, you know, like uh, something like Transformers, you know, it's like mm -hmm. looking after even Stevens and being like, dang, that's cool as hell, you know, like, but, you know, again, I didn't wish I was in his place of, in any kind of way. It was more so just like, wow, I just, I, that's something really cool. Even if I had like a little two line part in that, I would have loved mm. to that. Um, so it's more so that I don't think I really had any sort of, um, yeah, no, no kind of envy. I'm trying, I'm really trying to think, honestly. Oh, you know what? Um, honestly, I do think, that like like something something like ATL. I don't think it was actually ATL, but mm -hmm. I think at the time um, I was doing, I think I was doing either Even Stevens uh, or Bring It On. It was that time frame, and um, I think it was like Roll Bounce came out, yeah. and it was like that, and some other some other, couple other things. But it was like those movies were were hitting big at the time. And since I was like locked down to a show, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, crap. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Um, yeah, do I, I wish I definitely would have been able to have been a part of those kinds of projects, but I don't, I can't recall a specific role though. I don't think. So is there an actor that you have not worked with yet that you hope to work with one day? Like what is two, give me two up. Plenty. Oh, geez. Oh man. Um, uh, I all, you know what? And this is so bad. This is so bad. I always forget this actor's name. Always, every because I get asked this question a lot, and I can never remember. And I want to say it's like something like Titus, but it's not. I don't think it's Titus. Anyway, what were they on? What he was they? on Cloak and Dagger on Hulu. The main, the guy who plays the, the the main character in that show, he's fantastic, like absolutely fantastic. Uh, I really wish I saw him more, but mm -hmm. yeah. Love to love to work with him. Um, I would love to work with my one of my favorite actors, Edward Norton. Uh, that is um, one of my favorite actors. He um, taught me a lot about subtlety and just um, really kind of immersing yourself in a character after seeing Fight Club, after seeing mm -hmm. uh, Primal Fear. Uh, he's just a guy that really sort of is a chameleon. You can't, you when you say, you know he's a big actor, but you're like, wait, what is he? What did he do? And you're like, you're like thinking all these roles, but you don't think of him that way. You don't think of him as Tom Cruise or Will Smith because it's like, oh, he's really in that, and he was just that character in that movie. I didn't even really <laughs> know that that was ever. Uh, and I love being that sort of kind of uh, performer. So, um, yeah, I would love to work with them. And I mean, there's there's so many so many people. Uh, Gugu uh, and Batha Raw. I've been a fan of a fan of Undercover with her and Boris Kojo. Um, so yeah, I, like I said, I could I could go all day. <laughs> <laughs> so the Gary in his free time, what, is, what do you do? What, do? what is something that people may not know about you that you like to do in your free time? And somebody said, Aubrey Joseph 
Is the actor from ah, Cloak and Dagger? There it is. I don't know why I said Titus. See, I told you. I was like, I know it's <laughs> I'm going to remember this guy's name, where I am. I don't know why I always forget. I think it's because Aubrey Joseph is really like a chameleon-like name. It's like, mm -hmm. I don't want to say Aubrey because I'm thinking Drake. And I'm like, he's not Drake. And <laughs> I, Joseph is like a first name. I wouldn't think it's a last name. So it's like, I don't think it <laughs> So you don't put them together. I got you. <laughs> But um, but yeah. Um, what was the question? I'm sorry. What, what, what did you uh, just ask? The Gary in his free time. What is it that people may not know about you? Uh, I don't know if it's something that they may not know about me, but I paint. Uh, this is my. Uh, I was just about to ask. Is that yeah, right behind me? Yeah, uh, my my Bart Simpson. Um, yeah, I I paint and I just. Uh, I've really been starting to take it seriously just lately in the past. I'd say six months. Um, it's basically um, becoming a passion that I didn't know I really had the capability to do. It happened. I had a bad car accident about three years ago. I was uh, in bed and I, I was physical therapy and all that kind of stuff. So couldn't really move around. I was just kind of stuck to my room. I was like, well, what can I do? You know, kind of just in here and painting became a thing. And then in the pandemic, which happened pretty much, you know, not not long after. It was like, well, now it's <laughs> it's it's kind of really serious now, and I just kind of honed my skills a little bit, and um, yeah, it's 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 been great and uh, fulfilling, and um, I will hopefully have a website soon and be doing a gallery sometime uh, in um, in LA, um, probably in the summer. I'm hoping, and uh, yeah. Um, just just that, uh, I'm a gamer, you know, I read a lot. I, I do mm -hmm. everything, uh, honestly. <laughs> uh, I'm one of those people that, I, with the exception of like, I guess, extreme sports, you know, I'm not like a rock climber or anything, but <laughs> uh, I do enjoy a thrill for sure, but yeah. So being in LA, I'm pretty sure you've walked up that um, that mountain. What is the- um, Runyon Canyon. I Oh my God, that thing killed me. Like I got out the car and walked up the street. And I was I'm like, you know I, what? I, all the trails in Runyon Canyon, if you don't know that there's actually multiple and there's, they're, you know, sort of leveled as far as their, their, I guess, difficulty. Um, mm -hmm. So I've, and yeah, it gets pretty bad. That's not even the worst one though. There's a couple of really tough ones around, but uh, Runyon's, it's not, it's not a joke, especially the tough ones. Uh, you, you do that on a hot day. It'll get you. <laughs> oh, so back to those paintings. I have become, well, I've, I've always enjoyed like a good painting. Um, yeah. Over the past year or two, I've wanted to see more paintings by African, by Black people yeah. in my house. So when you start, <laughs> set, but even before the website, like I need something right. exclusive. Well, no, I, in my house. I still sell. I actually sell. I just do not, I don't do commission because I, to be honest, I just don't like disappointing people. And so okay. is, you know, I don't want you to have this vision in your head and be like, can you do this? And I'm like, yeah. And then it doesn't come out that way. <laughs> yeah. But that, I just, you know, to save myself, I like, you know, I'm not going to do commission, but if I paint something and you like it, be free to, to grab it. Um, I have everything on my Instagram and my Twitter. Every time I paint, I post it. Um, I will be having a separate Instagram soon for my art, though, probably within the next week or so. That way, you guys can kind of contact me uh, before the website goes up. And mm -hmm. yeah, and it'll be, you know, sort of streamlined through there. Uh, I still have a couple uh, available. This Bart actually is not available. It just mm -hmm. sold. So I hope you weren't thinking about that one. <laughs> <laughs> But um, but yeah, I do have a couple here that are, are still still available. Um, yeah, so let let me know. <laughs> I will go to Instagram and check it out, and I will let you know. <laughs> um, so, in addition to the the art website coming and the whole art project coming, what else can people look forward to this year, next year, and beyond? Oh um, yes. man. Um, well, I just announced uh, two days ago that I, um, I finally can actually say that I'm a part of the Long Halloween uh, Batman cast, which will be released sometime this summer. So officially part of the DC uh, universe. So I'm super happy that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that's coming this summer. You can expect me in there. Uh, I play Lieutenant Pierce, who's a new character uh, in Gotham, who uh, is essentially Gordon's partner throughout the night. Uh, if you've ever read The Long Halloween, you know it's just a crazy night of Batman trying to corral all of his worst enemies. And so, uh, yeah, I help Gordon and Batman through the night. 
um, just kind of uh, as as those eyes and ears on the streets. So uh, I'm really cool, excited about that. Um, I am recording a poetry album. I do spoken word. I have been doing that since I was maybe 13. Um, and so I, in the pandemic, was writing, you know? <laughs> so um, I also had some stuff that I had literally been sitting on for years and years and years. And people were just like, you have to release this. Like why, they would read it and be like, why is this out? So uh, I will be doing a book, a physical uh, book, a digital book, along with the uh, actual spoken word album to go along with it. Um, and that will hopefully be done sometime before the fall. Um, um, that's my that's my plan. So yeah. <laughs> so can you give us a little spoken word, something something easy, oh, quick that you remember, like off the top of your head? Nothing that I remember off the top of my head. Oh, if I had my other phone, I would. Oh man, man, oh man, oh man. I'm like, if I could remember, I I can't. I honestly can't. <laughs> so okay. be honest, I pushed out everything, and I do this especially because I just stopped filming Trace, which I uh, a limited series. That's the other thing that's on its way. Mm. I just finished Trace, and so all of my brain is dialogue. I have five episodes. <laughs> in my head that I need to get rid of. So yeah, I'm blank, unfortunately. But um, what I will say is that a snippet might be coming soon. So okay. if you guys want to get sent the snippet and play the snippet, you can do that. <laughs> I think we need to do that, yeah. send that. So I, I will be yeah, releasing something just to get people a tease to see, you know, like, hey, I actually do promise uh it's not corny um but yeah hopefully that'll be coming soon probably within the next couple of weeks you know what i, I have a couple <laughs> more questions but uh, okay. i felt like we were kind of like winding down but then you said okay. something and i was <laughs> like when it comes to preparing for a role like how do you like what is your process to prepare and then when that role is over like how do you get those episodes out of your head yeah um it uh, obviously depends on the role this one was a tough one um you know and uh, i play i play a detective uh and you know it's about it's about uh, a set of murders that happened i believe in the 70s um that we're basically modernizing and um it was it's difficult you know um you know we were dealing with some real life crimes that happened that you know, we're just kind of transferring to, like I said, modernize the story. Um, but being being in that every day is is rough. And so that's yeah, that was that was difficult. I spent a lot of time uh, studying film that had the same tone, uh, you know, things like Kiss the Girls, Fallen, Along Came a Spider, Bone Collector. You Morgan know. Freeman, Denzel. Yeah, that's and right. That. The, the Morgan Freeman, Denzel, you know, yeah. right? <laughs> Um, you know, and, you know, watching that stuff back to back to back to back, it was, yeah, it was difficult. So kind of just went through that period of being a hermit. And then now, you know, it's only been, it's literally been, I think, 48 hours. So I've just, I slept the entire first day and <laughs> just got that out. So today I uh, just kind of had the first time where I was like, okay, I, I can do stuff and not think mm -hmm. about you know, lines for tomorrow and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's it's refreshing. This is probably one of the toughest. You know, when I did Blackbird, uh, which I did a couple years ago, um, preparing for that role was um, sort of, I think, maybe the second toughest um, when it came to the type of character and the departure from myself that it mm -hmm. is. Was, you know, just a, a trash talker. He smoked and, you know, like, and, you know, was just a bad influence. And so um, even with that, I um, started smoking for the role, you know, because I wanted the authenticity of me actually having that, that whole thing. But when it came down smoking to that, cigarettes. when it came down, what'd you say? Smoking cigarettes? Uh, yeah, it was cigarettes and, of, and also weed. So, you know, it was one of those things that uh, was just <laughs> like, it's a tough thing. It's a little bit yeah. of a, a little bit of a physical thing that I need to get off. But, uh, you know, it's, it's also in the types of stories you know, if it's something that actually gets um, to me, you know, uh, you know, when it comes to, I guess, how hard it is to tell, you know, that's something that you have to prepare for. And also the decompressing sometimes is worse than the, pre the preparation because stuff like that sticks with you. You know, it's, it's easier to kind of rise to that point, um, mm -hmm. especially 
studying, you're, you're, you're emulating, right? And then on set, you finally, you're there, you become, right? And then once it cuts, okay, there's no, there's no preparation for the decompression, you know? So you're like, ah, what do I do? Um, and that's really kind of what, what happens. Um, Blackbird was a little bit easier. Um, he had a bad family life and things like that. So it's stuff that I, I resonated with, but with this character, uh man yeah i don't resonate with it at all so it's it's tough mm. don't, there's nothing to to sort of relay it back to it's just gunk you know and so you have to kind of just like i said feel fill your days with happy thoughts and things <laughs> but have you ever just woke up in the middle of the night and just like start uh, reciting lines just like out of nowhere <laughs> not reciting lines but i would definitely say um woken up you know under the the nightmare of things that have happened on set stories that i've had to definitely uh blackbird uh there were definitely situations with uh with like abuse and things like that that is you know mm -hmm. close to home and i'm just like when you when you sort of put yourself in that situation um your 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 psyche um always says that something's the matter right you know mm -hmm. it's when you're not doing things acting even when you start a new job or you know uh meet your in-laws for the first time that anxiety can get to you so much that you you know that that has you wake up in cold sweats sometimes or you get that stuff where you just can't fall asleep and that is the common for me uh i think maybe total while i was filming this three months i think maybe i had mm, i'd say less than 10 good nights of sleep for sure. Yeah. I like, right. I say good nights a more than three hours, you know. Um, yeah. So it's it, it's it gets bad if you if you decide to go there and you can decide, you know, as an actor, you can check out, you can kind of go halfway, you know, we see it evidence all the time, you know, <laughs> we're not gonna say no names, you know, but we <laughs> see sometimes when actors sort of just kind of punch in the clock and, mm. you know, decide, is this project worth my sanity and you know you just decide uh sort of what level to go from from there mm, i got you yeah Eric, <laughs> i appreciate you i'm glad I, you finally were able to make this happen same um, same anytime I'm you guys gonna, want me on the show let me know <laughs> yeah i mean you have a lot of stuff going on and, and this platform is not going anywhere as yeah. i'm sure your career is not going anywhere we need we so need we need platforms like you guys i say this all the time especially when i'm on uh young black you know show or creators who are doing pop things like that like you asked me about having the voice and like what you you know what i want as far as the future for my projects that doesn't happen unless i have things like this you know what i mean it happened we don't happen uh, the black producers and writers and directors of the world can't reach the, the people that we need in order to have people look at us the way that we need unless we have you guys, unless we have these people who are constantly calling back to people, constantly saying, hey, remember this guy? Or hey, look at what they're doing. Hey, you need to call attention to this. So from, from me and I'm sure from anyone else that you have of my, of my you know, field on this show, I definitely appreciate you for sure. And, and also uh, 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 your co-host. I know she wasn't able to join us, but. <laughs> we really do miss you, but you're here in our spirit and our. <laughs> but yeah, man, I definitely appreciate it. Um, like I said, anytime you need us, we, we have you. Any of the platforms that I'm on. Speaking of which, I'll be hitting you up on the side about those in a minute. Yeah. Um, but yes, like much success on everything that you're doing. Oh, I'm um, so sorry. Yes, go for it. One thing, I'm so sorry. I, for the first time, am taking uh, teaching seriously. I was against classes for the, for the most part um, for, the, for years and years and years um, because I feel that they don't have a personal touch to them. Mm -hmm. I am finally teaching and coaching at uh, GSAW, uh, which is Giovanni Samuels Acting Workshop. Mm -hmm. Atlanta, Giovanni Samuels was actually in Bring It On with me. She played Carisha, um, who and she also was on all that. So she's a, a great, great, a great teacher, great owner of that business down there. Uh, I am head of the voiceover department there, but you can book me for anything. So if you're looking to, you know, dip your toe into voiceover, it's the first time and only time and the only place 
that you can learn from me and my experience. I don't have a normal way of teaching. I don't teach the techniques probably that you're used to, but I teach mm -hmm. from 20 years of voiceover experience and that's all I can do. So I hope that that's good enough uh, for my people and that's it. <laughs> but I wanted to you say that. It. You heard it here guys, book this man, reach out okay. to this man, serious inquiries only. Yes. <laughs> We appreciate it. Um, looking forward to everything that you have going on. Um, if you need any support, any push, anything that we can do, definitely let us know. Definitely, definitely. You guys, same, okay? You have a great one. Absolutely. Week. We appreciate it. You too. Bye, guys.